Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. Now then, it's... Uh, ooh. Let's uh, start with a quote from former Italy international Roberto Gallia. He said, I played against Maradona, Platini and Baggio, but the one capable of the most incredible skills was Mike Kit Simon. <laughs> 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 I should have known. I should have known. But you didn't. No, I should have. Uh, but the one <laughs> player capable of the most incredible skills was Michael Danny Teatro. Uh, shut up! <laughs> Oh, that's the first punch on the rebel. Was Michael Loudrup? Michael oh, Loudrup. Michael, Loudrup. Michael Loudrup. Have some respect. <laughs> Sorry, Come Michael. On. I apologise absolutely unreservedly. What a player. <laughs> what a player. Still, one of the players, that, although he's probably late 40s now, one of the players. He could still do it. Oh, brilliant. He'd be mm. brilliant now, even, yeah, so, yeah. even so, yeah. He'd, he'd stand in the centre circle in like a League Two game yeah. and just knock it about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Owning the peak. The yeah. range of passing was like, sat nav esque. Yeah. <laughs> now, oh, uh, speaking of sat navs, before, um, before you go into this, I really should tell you that um, I read a great story about Royston Drenta when he first signed for Real Madrid yeah. um, he was given a brand new car with a sat nav right? <laughs> <laughs> and he was driving down the road <laughs> this is a few years ago apparently yeah. he was driving down the road trying to get to his new place or going somewhere and the sat nav said turn right now so he just turned right straight away into a police car <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's, he's not done anything too mental at Everton yet not but yet, it's no. going to happen yeah, don't worry about that his middle name is Ricky yeah, as yeah. well. Royston Ricky Drenton. Sorry, I've sidetracked the profile. Apologies. You have. <laughs> That's all right. Another apology from Luke Moore there. Um, now then, uh, he was. You can redeem yourself mm. by doing a little mathematic equation. Well, it's hardly an equation. Uh, he was born on the fifteenth of June, nineteen sixty-four. Three years before the summer of love. Easy one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's what Laudrup does. He yeah. enables people to have a better time and it yeah. makes it easy for you. I actually agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now then, uh, well, that was his birthday. Um, Michael Laudrup, from a very footballing family. Uh, obviously, his younger brother, Brian, went on to be a very good player, but his father, Finn Laudrup, was uh, a Danish international. Was his grandfather not a player as well? His uncle was uncle, uh, uncle. a former player and coach, Ebbe Skovdal, who Aberdeen, Aberdeen fans will, will know well. Um, now, uh, Michael Laudrup, at the tender age of 13, he turned down the chance to go to the Ajax youth setup to hone his skills in his homeland. So already, he was uh, turning his a very young player indeed. Now, now, he made his senior debut for KB at the age of 17 and then moved to bigger club Bromby in 1982. He was voted Danish Player of the Year at 18 um, and he was also third top goalscorer that season. Bearing in mind he was uh, a central midfield player. He's won some awards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's won some absolutely he, outrageous awards. He never awards. won the Ballon d'Or. Which is no, such it's a a, it's such he won the Don Ballon, the um, Spanish overseas player. Yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, as part of the Don Ballon, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, um, that, that country's not been massively blessed with players, Denmark, I think it's fair to say. They're, they're yeah, bad strong. Strong teams, but they've not had such strong in individuals as him. Yeah. He's unquestionably the greatest yeah. Danish player of all time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. That's why he went abroad, Pete. Yeah. Um, uh, but before he did that, he made his. Uh, in fact, no, it wasn't before; it was just after. But he made his international debut around that time. And two years later, he played for Denmark at the Euro '84 Championships. Um, now, Juventus came in for him in '83, uh, but there was a two foreigner rule in Serie A, so he was loaned straight away to Lazio. You are too foreigner, mate. <laughs> <Get out. laughs> he did well there at Lazio before. Returning to Turin to play for Juve, uh, and for Juventus, he won the league in his first year there. Uh, this was the same year, 1986, where he had a great World Cup with Denmark in Mexico. Scored a lovely one against Uruguay in the first round. Mm. You've seen it? He did an individual goal. He just just glides through the defence, and just the keeper just sort of dives out of his way, and then he just mm. incredibly graceful player. Yeah, like, what, the sort of player that looks like he's he's not really touching the ground when he's running, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and he doesn't ever look like he's putting too much effort. Never sweat. Like, yeah, he's never mm. he's never flashy for me. He no, was just sort of it's like a business, like really, really talented. Well, he player. did amazing things, but just in a really yeah, every, yeah. everyday sort of way. Yeah. Yeah. He would. Do, it sounds very very basic way of putting it, but he'd just run round players and make yeah, it yeah. look like they were the players themselves weren't <laughs> trying to tackle him. Yeah. It's really <laughs> <laughs> Every move was very necessary. You mentioned he went to um, so, um, to Juve Juventus and they won Serie A straight away. It's a pattern. It's a pattern to that. <laughs> You'll come on to it. It's a pattern. <laughs> Everywhere he goes, trophy. Yeah. Well, uh, just staying uh, briefly with that lovely moment uh, against Uruguay when he scored, um, it inspired uh, Copenhagen Royal Opera soloist Guido Pavatalu uh, to write in his honour the Loudrop song. How did they know which Loudrop brother it was about? Well, I don't think Brian was on the scene at that time. Oh, okay. Um, Michael would have still been uh, a young player. Now, was it uh, as good as the ketchup song? <laughs> I'm willing to say yes they without have, hearing it. They should have done like a really aggressive hip hop song. Song. <laughs> could have been the, the, the Michael Loud rap. He's a royal opera soloist. <laughs> the ketchup song's about Akin Fenwell. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, we're going to press on. Um, He's a soloist. <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Uh, relevant because it was a solo goal um, they also beat the Germans in that group went through in first position but they were hammered by Spain in the second round but that was when the world really got a good old look at uh, Michael Laudrup now Michel Platini was the main man for Juventus at that time uh, he retired in 1987 and Laudrup was meant to be the man to fill his formidable boots and it didn't quite work out like that uh, it was always going to be very difficult of course but um, I, I don't think Laudrup quite fitted in perhaps to the system at uh, Juventus but interestingly enough Platini said this about Laudrup he said he was one of the greatest talents of all time he was the best player in the world during training but he never exploited all his qualities on the pitch um, Michael had everything apart from one thing he wasn't selfish enough yeah, so, mm. some people also say I can't remember it was who said it but a manager famously said about him he's, he's him at 80% is better than anyone else on the pitch. I think it was Johan Cruyff. But I can't get him to play 100%. I can't get 100% out of I him. I think it was sorry. Johan Cruyff. I think him and Johan Cruyff, well, well, we'll move on to this, but um, obviously two huge characters, you know, yeah. especially um, big Johan. Yeah. But anyway, it was actually... Loudrop, Loudrop didn't... I mean, he got quite a few goals for, for, for a, ostensibly a sort of playmaker. Oh, he got loads of goals. But he loved a slip. Yeah. He loved a slip. Rather than, uh, a, bit of a, rather than a sort of 18, 20-yard strike, he'll have, a, he'll have a slip. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Now, um, some suggest that it was this unselfishness um, that he possessed... That Johan Cruyff who was the manager of Barcelona at the time liked about Laudrup he would fit into that Barcelona side the dream team of course it became yeah. to be known as he would sit in there quite nicely setting up the likes of Stoichkov and the pass and move uh, and so on and so forth Cruyff gave him a free role when he moved there in uh, the late 80s and, and Laudrup excelled in this and on the Barcelona website you can find this written about um, Michaelino Laudrup as they put it um, they said that he was the artist of the dream team a creative player of such elegance that it was often joked that he was the kind of player that could play in coat and Tails. <laughs> yeah. That would be an interesting kit. It well, would be an excellent kit. His yeah. change of direction was really good as well. He oh, yeah. changed on like a, on like a, mm. you know, like a 10 pence piece. He, he used to do that thing where he'd look one way and then pass the other oh, yeah. way. You know? The old no look pass. You can't yeah. beat that. Mm. that was a trademark, he, was, wasn't it? he was also a great finisher of moves. He'd start them and get on the end of them as well. Yeah. Uh, he scored a lot of one on ones, you know, but it, it would never miss. He would just yeah. glide through and, and, and slot quite nicely. Um, scored a lot of goals, had a real uh, good hit on him. And, and, and what vision? Yeah, I'll the get man it. had incredible vision. Yeah, do you know what? As well, he, I mean, it was an absolute git for a classy assist. And yeah. that, you know that scooping pass that you often see Xavi play mm. when he'll just scoop it over the defence and Messi will run in and score. Yeah. Um, and, and Fabregas has gone on, on the end of one or two this season. I, I'm, I swear they must have been influenced by, that, by oh, yeah, Michael Laudrup because yeah. that scooping pass he did it against. He did it for Denmark against Nigeria in the 98 World Cup. I think it was Ebbing yeah. Sand. Well, they got beat about 4 1, didn't they, or something? Denmark won 4 1. Yeah, yeah. And he, it, just the scoop over. And it's so hard to defend against. Yeah. So hard. Oh, you, it's you, absolutely you, incredible you, at that. I wouldn't surprise me if they were influenced by him because you get the impression that a lot of Barcelona players are very well versed in the history of the club and stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. Get sort of well taught about it. Well, Andrew Sinesta says he's his favourite player. Blimey. So there you go. There's yeah. an endorsement for you. Um, he was considered the finest passer of the ball um, in the world at the time, and Barca fans used to hang a banner up at the New Camp reading, Enjoy Loudrup. <laughs> Succinct. <laughs> 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 yeah. so they should put that on their little terms of use when you can sell you a ticket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Point five, no smoking. Point six, enjoy Loudrup. Yeah. <laughs> Please enjoy Loudrup responsibly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 93 goals in two, 288 games for Barca. Incredible for a, <laughs> for a midfielder. Um, and yeah I'm sure he, as you say he's influenced many um, Barcelona <coughs> midfielders currently playing with his playing style um, so a very important player no doubt in, in the club's history a modern history uh, Jose Marie Baquero do you remember him? Uh, who I played, love Baquero, yeah, yeah, played nine years at Barcelona and was there for all of Laudrup's years at the club said no one has given Barcelona as much inspiration as Michael we all looked up to him it is a privilege to have your day enriched by genius <laughs> hey, I mean he, he really is an all time great I think Loud was very very underrated yeah, I remember it, yeah. it was just such a joy to watch mm. Mm. he won four La Ligas uh, for, for Barcelona in, in the, the years he was there it was he, always a trophy didn't they win four in a row actually? they won four in a row yeah. sorry, yeah. and they hadn't won, many, hadn't won one for a while That's Madrid right, yeah. were bossing it before this then. was Cruyff's dream team you yeah. know, and he, was, he was arguably the heartbeat of that side he won a Copa del Rey and the European Cup in 1992 at, at Wembley at Wembley uh, against uh, Sampdoria, Sampdoria. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 92 was a funny year for him 
he missed out on the European Championship win with uh, with, with Denmark, which is just crazy. Yeah. Him, and, yeah. him and Brian, they, they fell out. No, with no, Brian was there. They fell out. Oh, was it? Okay, but they I fell think, out of Richard Moore Nielsen. I think Jan Mulby missed that as well. Did he? He did. Yeah, they fell out with the manager. The manager. I don't know. I don't know what it was o- over, but there was a piece yeah, of Michael Andrew. He, he did yeah. fall out with the manager. But Denmark hadn't qualified for the tournament, as we all perhaps remember, or certainly some of us. And uh, Yugoslavia, who went through kind of ahead of them due to the conflict in in that former nation, they were not allowed to participate. So Denmark took their place. Mm. Now you've got to remember Denmark. Well, they've, obviously they've never been a great powerhouse in, in world football, and, and they weren't back then. They had failed to qualify for crying out loud, and they went to that tournament through the back door without by far their best player and yeah. greatest mm. ever player, and they end up winning the whole thing. Yeah. It I is mean, remarkable. Well, and you it's know, such a sickness for him not to be involved. The fact that they can miss players like uh, you know Michael Lardrup and Jan Mulby, if anything, it just goes to show the strength of John Jensen. Worth a mention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, when there's a big, massive piece of the jigsaw missing, you've got to raise your game, and maybe yeah. that's what happened. Maybe yeah. they yeah, they, yeah. they won because of rather than in spite of. You know, well, Michael Lardrup was known as the as the, as the sort of poor man's John Jensen anyway. <laughs> 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 it makes sense. I didn't know where that nickname came from before, but you just pointed yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, I was going to finish on that. <laughs> 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 and and we'll finish with a quote. And John Jensen said, <laughs> "Yeah, he was just a poor man's yeah. me, really." Anyway, he managed to patch things up with the coach eventually and carried on playing for his country. Now, when Barca signed Romario, they needed to rotate players due to the three foreign rule in Europe, and Laudrup was left out of the European Cup final when they were beaten 4-0 by Milan, and that was the, the, the end of his time, really. Capello Barcelona. said that galvanised his players, didn't he? He did. said that was the biggest, thing, biggest boost they could have had. That's right, he said he feared uh, Michael Laudrup the most, and Croft made the mistake of leaving him out. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, so after these events, Laudrup sensationally signed for Real Madrid, won the league in his first season with them. <laughs> yeah, the be- my favourite fact about that is, when in his, I, think, I think I'm right in saying... Um, I'm sure many listeners will point out if I'm not that he when he was at Barcelona they beat Real Madrid 5-0 mm, yeah. he went to Real Madrid and they beat Barcelona 5-0 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> isn't there a quote from that where he, he said something like um, you know I've played in two of the uh, you know the, two of the biggest games in Spain and the score is 10-0 to me <laughs> <laughs> really weird like that um, really thousands, out of character thousands yeah. of people signed a petition um, to stop him going at Barcelona mm-hmm. thousands of fans did he, he, he was very astute though because he said it was, it was after World Cup 94 he moved wasn't mm. it and he said I knew that Barcelona had loads of players going to the World Cup and traditionally I looked into it and traditionally like, teams tend to struggle after a World Cup tournament and they've had a lot of players oh, missing is that right? but Real Madrid didn't have that many players going yeah. so I decided to make the move and I'm not from um, I'm not from Barcelona I'm not from Madrid yeah. so for me it didn't make any difference but I think he underestimated the reaction <laughs> when, he, uh, yeah. when he played in the return game That's didn't right, yeah. but it's, it's incredible how often that happens players going from Barcelona to Madrid yeah it happens quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that was. Well, it's happened with. Well, it, I don't know if it happens a lot, but it happens with big name players. I mean, yeah. It happened with Figo, didn't it? Yeah, Prosonaki yeah. as well. Yeah, and uh, but I he, mean, he didn't go direct between. Well, no, but it's, even so, I think that shows like Ronaldo as well. Ronaldo, it's, yeah. I think Luis Enrique played for both. Yeah, if I'm correct there, uh, maybe not though. Uh, anyway, he got his revenge, of course, uh, against Barcelona. Oh, was it revenge? Well, certainly enjoyed his moment. He there. won't ever commit to which team he prefers. Yeah, that's right. Himself. That's right. Raúl said in 2006 that. Um, Michael Adrup was Pass to me, pass to me, pass to me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He said he was the best player He ever played with Now he may have changed his mind In the last five years But still mm. 2006 mm. Um, uh, Lewis Figure said Loudrup was oh, the best no, player probably, I think he has Because he played with Thomas Graveson Now you're talking Yeah so. um, uh, <laughs> Loudrup uh, Figo said Loudrup was the best player He ever played against Now Ivan Zamorano Remember the Chilean forward yeah. Who was at Madrid At the same time as Loudrup Wasn't having the best of times When, Al- when Loudrup showed up um, Zamorano won the uh, the Pachichi Award in Spain, top goal scorer, and eighty two percent of Zamorano's goals were assisted by Marcos. <laughs> <laughs> love Brilliant. it, that is love incredible. It. Yeah. Uh, during his time at Madrid, he did his, win. His tagline should be enabling you to enjoy your football, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. making things better for you. Just mm. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, hey Zamorano, can I come on your house and have some food? N- no. Uh, how many goals? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll do the cooking. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll have that shirt off your back as well. <laughs> if you don't mind. And that Pachichi award <laughs> can I have a go in your car thank you <laughs> you'll enjoy the ride more I've unlocked yeah. the defence I'm unlocking your car mate yeah. <laughs> and when I say car I mean why yeah. <laughs> and when I say unlocking I mean easy yeah. um, take anyway. her out for a nice lamb lunch <laughs> 
<laughs> a lamb lunch there. Um, uh, now, during his time in Madrid, he did win a trophy with Denmark, the 1995 King Fud Cup, which is now known as the Confederations yeah. Cup. Mm. It's not a bad There you go. It's it's enough, isn't it? Hey, Jimbo. I'd love it if England won it. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't still even got qualify. The tournoi, yeah. mate. Yeah. The tournoi. Yeah. I can't tell that off us. <laughs> um, he was only moved to Madrid for two seasons and then went to play in Japan for a year before returning to Europe with Ajax for one last season. Where he, he was won. quite decent. League and Cup double. Yeah, I think he's got a really good scoring record for Ajax in his last season. I think he did, yeah. His last ever match was at World Cup 98. Crazy to think, Euro 84. Yeah. He played in that and then, and then World Cup 98. And Denmark had a great tournament. They reached the quarterfinals only to be beaten 3 2 by Brazil. They had beaten Nigeria, of course, uh, 4 1, I think it was, in the previous round. Um, but uh, Denmark, uh, after they were eliminated, Michael Aldrup said that was the last match of my career, but it was also one of the best, if not the best. Yes, they really, they really made Brazil work for that. Yeah. They did indeed. It was a piece of Rivaldo brilliance, I think, that, that won the game. But Laudrup has since gone on to become a manager with great success in his uh, homeland with Bronby. Mixed fortunes abroad with Getafe, Spartak Moscow, and, and more recently, Real Mallorca. Um, but it's as a player where, uh, that we're inducting him today. And I'll leave the final words to the great Franz Beckenbauer, who said, In the 60s, the best player was Pelé. In the 70s, it was Cruyff. In the 80s, it was Maradona. And in the 90s, it was Laudrup. Come I mean, Michael Laudrup. Oh, you you enjoy come. Michael Laudrup. <laughs> I think Romario named him in like his top five players of all time as well, but behind, yeah, behind himself. Him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>